right, guys, thank you for that. We'll talk to you coming up more in our second hour. Right now, we're going to highlight our rolling, running on ice community as well. It's Friday, time to talk with Mary O'Connell. And Mary, let's talk a little bit about, as we mentioned in the intro, cold shipping in a cold economy. And this is fascinating because when you're talking about cold chain, obviously, you've got perishable goods. It's not like you can just say, you know what, your rates are too high, we're going to leave it in the yard and we're not going to worry about it, right? Because then it spoils. you got to get it done regardless of the cost. Exactly. That's one of the important things. And, you know, something to really remember as you're going out there and, you know, maybe prospecting new customers or, you know, taking on more loads for an existing customer is that you have to source not just regular capacity. You have to actually be sourcing refrigerated capacity. And whether that's through an expedited load or um, maybe a bulk shipment or anything like that, that's something to keep in mind as you're working through those loads because it's very important that the temperature does not go out of range and that product does not spoil because that is the fastest way to get a shipper to not like you. And Mary, what's going to be some of the tips and really being able to be successful in a cooling market? I mean, I'm sure there are still some things that need to be expedited, but is there a certain segment or a certain area or a certain need that usually you need to focus on? Yeah, so a lot of your manufacturing is still going to be expedited. Um, Despite shippers' best laid plans, something's going to happen. um, Operations are going to run short, and something's still going to need to be expedited. Or you just have a shipper who is totally fine running expedited three to four times a day, and they're totally happy to cut that big of a check, which personally, I wish I had that kind of fun money, but I do not. So it's really important to kind of, you know, the biggest tip that you have is understand what your shipper's goals are. So if your shipper's goals, whether you're a carrier, whether you're a driver, whether you're a broker, you need to understand if they want to cut costs and they want to improve operations, then what role can you play in that? Like, obviously you can't make the the line manufacture something faster, but what you can do is, you know, suggest that, Hey, maybe we send a truck every day at three and you just load what's on there and we send it out. And other times, you know, That way you're not constantly paying for it expedited. You just load what's available that day and then we just send a truck every day. Or excuse me, or if you have someone that's like, I don't care about price, I just want it there as fast as possible. I don't care that I'm spending a million dollars a quarter. That's it. Um so that's something that um, I would hope that a shipper's not out there saying that and they're thinking more about their operations. But hey, who am I to tell a shipper what, they're, what they should do with their lives? And so that's something that's really important is to sit down and understand what those goals are. If you're just there to move freight for them and ask no more questions, okay. If you're there to kind of help them and maybe come up with some, some solutions so they can optimize their operations, that's great too. It's just about understanding what they want. Obviously, right now we're in a market where there's an overabundance of capacity and everybody is looking for freight, honestly, no matter what it is. If you are maybe a carrier who is like dedicated to reefer and you are just not continuing to see those volumes that you need on the cold chain side of things, or even if you're a broker who is only dedicated reefer and looking, is looking to diversify a little bit, do you think that now is a good time to do that? Maybe you spend a little bit more when it comes to adding some assets, whether that's a flatbed trailer or two, or whether that's getting in some, hauling some non-refrigerated freight and diversifying what you're able to do in this space. That way, when the market turns again, which we know it eventually will, you have not only the experience, but then you have the equipment and the capabilities to do so. I think that is extremely important. Um, I will say that I don't know that I would diversify right off the bat with reefer shipments because those can be a little trickier. But I guess as far as specialty shipments go, that's a it's a good one to start with because the margin for error on a reefer load is much smaller than on a flatbed load because as we all know flatbed is different and has bridge requirements and it's just a whole other beast that I don't recommend getting into if you don't need to <laughs> just because it can be a headache uh that being said the reefer the reefer uh loads they are good they are they can be you know extremely profitable they just come with a lot more regular uh restrictions and you know policies and other things you need to be mindful of compared to your dry van stuff so if you're going to start on it I would definitely you know ask a million questions say explain that to me like I'm five. Don't be afraid to humble yourself and say, you know, I'm like, I just want to make sure that we're doing this right for you. Double check, triple check everything. Um, just because you really don't want to be 
you really don't want to be the one sitting there going, oh yeah, I know what I'm doing. And you have something come and then it, everything gets ruined because you didn't know that to ask a specific question because it's what you do in dry van, but in coal and reefer freight, it's a little bit different. So I would definitely say if you are diversifying, which <clears throat> excuse me, everyone should be doing, um, you should definitely just take a step back, maybe find someone in your office or find one of your friends in the industry that are, that already knows a little bit about it and say, Hey, what should I do? What questions should I ask? And if you're not sure if you know anyone, I highly recommend LinkedIn. Um, our guest today, Nick Scheib, I highly recommend sliding into his DMs. They are open and he is kind of an expert in a lot of things. And Mary, one of the big things that's always important, whether it's a down market or an up market, is going to be around relationships. Can you talk to some tips on really building or maintaining relationships, especially when you've just landed a new customer? Yeah, so the relationships are key. I mean, I think everyone has ever has constantly said this in this industry. It all comes down to relationships. And so those are the very, very important things that everybody needs to focus on um, because those relationships get you to where you are. Those relationships say, hey, you know, I'm here for you in good times and in bad times. It's not just about the good times when everybody's printing money, feeling good, everything's going well. It's about those bad times too, especially with spot rates, you know, continue to plummet. And some carriers are operating well below their um, operating expense. They're losing money every time they drive a truck. So that's where it has to come in and you have to say, hey, you know, I value you. Like, I want to keep you in business. What kind of agreement can we come to where you're still making money and you're not running at a loss, but I'm also not overpaying for my freight? That's where that's where those shippers and carriers have to really come together and say, hey, you know, we need to work this out. We need to get it together um, because if, eventually if, you know, your favorite carriers aren't taken care of enough, then they might cease to exist. And that's something that shippers need to be extremely mindful of, especially as, you know, it's not looking promising for a strong summer rebound. I think it's definitely uh, just really about taking care of each other and just building those relationships. It takes five extra seconds not from the seconds. It takes five extra minutes to talk to a carrier and ask them what's going on. How's their family? Um, maybe if they're, uh, maybe if they have kids in college and they want to go visit them for the weekend, it takes five minutes just to look in the system and see if you can get them a little bit closer to it. So that way they're not completely, they're not inconvenienced to go do it. It just takes a little bit and that little five extra minutes you might take could mean in a whole bunch in a couple months, if you run into a bind, they're more likely to help you out. So that's definitely something that everyone should be focusing on in good environments and bad environments. It takes five minutes to be a human, so just be a human. Mary, thank you for joining exactly. us this morning. Great to have you as always, and we'll catch Running on Ice this afternoon at 2 o'clock. Yep, uh, just keep watching Freight Waves TV. You do not want to miss all the content today. Awesome, Mary. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. Looking forward to your next episode. Thanks, guys. Have a good day. Have a great day. And of course, you can subscribe to her newsletter as well up on freightwaves.com slash newsletters. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back with our next check of the weather. So don't go away.